Oh, you paused it and started. Yeah. As long as you got me. Okay. So at the very end of class on Monday, as we whoop, hop back into what we were doing, uh, we had started talking about carbohydrates, um, and we're looking at. The iconic features of them and how do we make or break them. So we had first looked at monosaccharides and the iconic features that were easily identifiable on them. Okay, specifically things like our hydroxyl groups, right, these OHs. So here are all our hydroxyl groups. Okay, that allow me to sort of very easily kind of recognize my carbohydrate. Uh, remember the other thing that I had was a carbonyl group, right? And this is very hard. One of these days I'll get used to not doing that. Very hard to see in that ring structure. So I am going to, on purpose this time, flip. Okay. And so that carbonyl group, that, remember, is this business here. So at the very end of class, then, we had talked about, well, how do we make a disaccharide or a larger carbohydrate. And so we had brought back Janet and Carl. And you had told me at the end of class that doing this was dehydration synthesis. Remember, this is a two word. And we are starting with two smaller molecules. All right. And so then remember, we were going to look for those hydroxyl groups. That's where we're going to make dehydration synthesis happen. Remember, we think about these hydroxyl groups as being their hands with mittens on them. And if we're going to pull water away, right, that's our goal. We think of water being two hydrogens and an oxygen. So that's what I need to remove. I'm dehydrating. Okay, so I need to take two mittens off, two hydrogens. I'm going to take a mitten off of Janet and a mitten off of Carl. There's my two hydrogens. Okay, and then I need to take one hand, right, because they're going to share a hand. They're going to hold hands. And I always take mine off of Carl because forget Carl. All right, so we're going to take that oxygen. All right, so there's my water, dehydrated, taking that water away. Okay, and I've only been left now with, Got one oxygen left. Okay. That's the oxygen by which, by which we can be bonded on, right? That's the one we're going to hold hands on. You can imagine Carl swinging his arm out. I'm going to hold hands on that. Okay. That's where we're going to hold hands. So this is where we left class on Monday, was that hand hold, right, and you telling me that was dehydration synthesis. Okay, and so remember the goal of our dehydration synthesis is making that one bigger sugar, right, in this case we made a disaccharide, right, we had one ring, two rings, disaccharide. OK, 
Okay, so now that we've done this, okay, we've created what's called a covalent bond. That's the type of bond that we're sharing here. That's what the handhold is, right? What these arms really are. Okay. So where is the covalent bond that we formed? What are the elements that I'm using? Let me clean this up a little. Where did we just make bonds? What is my hand held on? So we pulled water out. What am I left with? What is my hand held on? So oxygen is one. Good. Oh, rats. Well, I guess we erased that now. God dang it. All right. So oxygen is one. What is the other end of my bond? Anybody know what's actually sitting there? Carbon. Carbon. All right. So this is one of those sneaky things that chemistry people do. Is as we look at these ring structures, what other color can we use here? Let's use red. Every time we see a bend or a cross on these structures, it means there's a carbon there. So all of these spots, eek, 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 are actually carbons. It's kind of like a lazy person's way of doing things. Okay, so our covalent bond, our hand holding, goes carbon to oxygen to carbon. Okay, that's Janet's shoulder, right, to their shared hand to Carl's shoulder. Okay, so all these rings we've been looking at are all carbon-based rings. And most of our biomolecules that we're going to look at are all going to be carbon core or carbon-based. And we're really just going to look at what is the arrangement of other stuff around them. So if we go back and look at our monosaccharide page, flip, nope, every time. I feel like I should just intuitively switch away from that. Okay. Our ring, we can see these would all be carbons, right? These are all kinks and bends. Okay. This same thing occurs for our chain here, right? Because these are crosses or crosshairs. These are also carbons. This is something we want to make sure that we kind of remind ourselves every time we see these things. No matter what the structure is, it's not just a carbohydrate thing. Every time there's a kink or a bend, it means there's a carbon. Chemists. What are we going to do with them? Okay, any questions about what we've done here? This is a big slide. Okay, now remember, we can do the reverse of this, right? This was dehydration synthesis. So we can do the same thing with hydrolysis. So here's our Janet and Carl. Get my pink back out. Listen, you rude little thing. There we go. Here's Janet. And Carl. All right, and so remember with hydrolysis, 
Our goal is lysis to break. Okay, and we're starting with one thing. All right, so I'm using or I'm adding water, right? Hydro to break. All right, so as always, I'm going to bully Carl a little. Choppy, choppy. All right, Carl's part of the handhold. Okay, so I'm going to let Janet keep the hand. Okay, or keep the oxygen. Okay, and I'm going to add in our water, right? Which remember, water is two hydrogens and another oxygen. All right, so I let Janet keep our hand. So all she needs is a mitten, right? So this is what we have going on here. We're going to add that mitten in. That's one of our H's, one of our hydrogens, okay? Janet is now single, ready to mingle. All right, she's got hands and mittens. She's ready to rock and roll. You go, Janet. Okay, Carl, got a little rougher time here. Okay, he needs a hand first. Okay, luckily we got one of those. Okay, and then that hand needs a mitten. I'm going to add a mitten on there as well. Luckily we happen to have one of those two. And now Carl is also single, ready to mingle. All right, so now we have two. Single individuals, right? So these guys are not hand holding. So we have two smaller sugars at the end of our party here. Okay, so in this case, right, we've gone from a disaccharide. Switch colors. So we have one, two rings linked together. So disaccharide, mono di, right, one, two. Okay, and broken that, hydrolyzed that down into single rings, right, mono saccharide. And so here we have more practice at the dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis. Okay, and remember if this still feels kind of gross, we have that uh, practice worksheet sitting on our uh, week three, gracious, our week two or week three page, right, where you can play with Janet and Carl and uh, whoever else I use to make fun couple names. Any questions about what we've done so far? Okay, so remember when we're looking at carbohydrates up to this stage, right, we've only looked at mono and disaccharides. Remember, this is how we count. Mono means one, di means two, poly means just not two, right? Counting is easy in biology. We like counting. Okay, so as we get into our polysaccharides, right? Remember, this just means there's lots of rings, right? So this is the kind of example we have here. We have one, two, three, four. Well, I'm really bored of counting. Okay, it's just a lot of stuff. That's why we don't have numbers. So the idea here is when we start putting a lot of these things together, we can really get some interesting and useful compounds. So we already mentioned before things like starch and chitin, okay, and cellulose. We have cellulose shown over here. Okay. Cellulose is that like 
stiff structural component we see in plants, right? Things that make like the stems of dandelions or leaves stand up. Okay. So and chitin, that's this one, in case you've never seen the word spelled out before. It doesn't spell like it sounds, right? That's that tough material on bugs. So you know when you step on a bug, it makes that like little crunchy noise. That's chitin. So once we start getting these much larger compounds, right, we start getting much more interesting and tougher, right, because we've linked much larger chains together. We can kind of almost build little fences out of them, shapes that are really valuable in nature. In addition, we can start modifying them and blending them with some of our other biomolecules that we're going to look at. So if we look at these bottom two, that's a terrible bracket, fine. Okay, these are carbohydrates that are mixed with some of our other biomolecules that we're going to talk about in a hot second. Right, so we have glycoproteins. Right, so here we have glyco, okay, much like the word glucose which if you flip back is what Janet or Carl was two seconds ago, right? This is one of our core simple sugars or monosaccharides. So here we're basically saying I'm going to take a monosaccharide and I'm going to mix it with a protein and then I'm going to chain it together, make big long chains of this. And this basically makes Right, a white, a type of white blood cell. Nifty. Okay. Or I can do the same thing, mix it with a lipid or a type of fat, and I can make a type of blood cell, red blood cell. Okay. So by mixing long chains of these complex or longer carbohydrates, okay, we get really useful biological compounds. Okay, so here we see we move away from fuel and into that structural component of these. Okay, any questions about carbs and their delicious amazingness? Oh, that also works. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do our first in-class activity. Um, so these are things that we're going to do to build basically in-class study guides together. So, either um, if you are working on a computer or you can do these on a computer, um, start a new like Microsoft Word document okay, or you can do these on your notes. You just need a separate sheet of paper. Okay, because you're ultimately going to turn these in. So what I want you to do is create a new sheet, and you're going to name it In Class Activity 1. You are going to turn these in online. Okay, so you're going to start a header. And this one's going to be for our carbs. Okay. You're going to build this without looking at your notes. And we're going to do our very best, and this is we're practicing studying, right? So I want you to list two things. Okay, the first thing I want you to give me is, right, and we're sticking back with our, there's an orange box, right, an orange box of goals. So the first thing I want you to give me is at least one thing that carbohydrates are valuable for. Okay, so what are we using carbs for? Okay, the second thing that you're listing is how would you recognize a carb, right, structurally, if you were given a whole bunch of pictures. How would you pick carbs out? Okay, so be specific. Okay, so list these two things. Okay, take a couple hot seconds.
Okay, so we're ready to pop on to the next biomolecule. Any questions about carbohydrates before we move on? All right, so onwards to biomolecule number two. The sheet that you have, do not lose, right? Treat it like your firstborn child now, okay? We're going to continue to add to that over the course of this unit, right? So at the end of each biomolecule, we're going to come back and we're going to continue to build our study guide for our biomolecules. So we want to make sure we don't lose track of that, so save it as a special file name or tuck it sweetly somewhere in your notes, whatever your jam is, right, because you don't want to have to go back and start all over with that business, right, or worse, get to the day where we turn it in and not have it at all. All right, so onwards and upwards, we finished carbs, and now we have lipids, okay, so here's my orange box again, gently reminding us that we want to stay goal oriented as we do this, right? So we still want to be thinking about, now we know why, right? We're going to be creating that study guide, which is also going to be the focus of our exams and all of that business. It's really going to help us. What are we using this biomolecule for? <clears throat> and how is it I'm going to be able to identify this volume molecule? In particularly, the second bullet point is going to be a little easier now as we go because we've seen one. So I can kind of look at this and say, okay, so this is what this looks like. And now, how does this compare to the ones that I've seen? Okay, lipids. In other words, fats. Also, things that are very delicious. So what are fats? Right? How would I recognize these? Hmm. So, just like our carbs, okay, we kind of recognize what fats do. Okay, these are also fuel. Okay, primarily these store energy. Okay, it's a much lighter way to store energy. And these are somewhat structural components. And we'll go through a couple of examples of these as we go through some specific ones. So what I have up for you then is what does a lipid look like? <coughs> I feel like I have to sneeze with it. So we can immediately see a lot of differences here. So the first thing I see is that all of that oxygen that I had before, right, those hydroxyl groups, are entirely absent. Okay, I've only got one here for like the entire structure. And this structure is substantially long. Okay, so very little oxygen and a lot of what are called hydrocarbons. Literally, hydrogen and carbon. So, if having a lot of oxygen on the carbohydrate made us polar, remember polar plays well with others, okay, having very little oxygen, right, makes us nonpolar, okay, does not play well with others. So if I look at this whole strand, right, the bulk of my biomolecule, I have none, right? This is a huge chunk of biomolecule that doesn't even have any oxygen. Forget little, there's like none. So it's a very non-polar, not playing well with others, right? Okay, so this is intuitive to me. Okay. When I think of fats and oils, right, if I take a big plop of fat, okay, or if you guys haven't used a lot of fat, if I take a lot of cooking oil, right, and I pour it on water, what happens? Does it dissolve and mix like my sugars did? What happens? It just 
sit. Just sits there. Right? Not playing well. It takes a lot to make oil and water mix nicely, doesn't it? Okay, so this is what we see. This is what we mean by nonpolar, not playing well. Okay, this is something that does not mix easily with other components. So does not play, does not mix, just likes to hang out by itself. <clears throat> okay, so that's one feature that we can see that's pretty easy to recognize. Switch colors here. Okay, the other feature that I see, which is maybe a little less friendly, is my capper. <clears throat> my carboxyl group. <clears throat> Go ahead and put this in a box. Fine. So unfortunately, chemistry naming conventions are both intuitive and very unfriendly simultaneously. <clears throat> so my carboxyl group right, means that I have a carbon. Check. And a hydroxyl. Okay, got that. Got all that business. Okay, but here's the problem. Okay, I can recognize this C double bonded O to the hydroxyl, but this looks and sounds awful familiar, doesn't it? Okay, what did my carbohydrate have? They had hydroxyls, and what else? Carbonyl. That kind of sucks, doesn't it? All right, so here, let's keep track of this. So what makes my carb special? They had hydroxyls. And carbonyls. What's a carbonyl look Rats, that hurt. What's a carbonyl look like? You got it. Okay, so super similar, and then we have the extra, right? The other group sticking out there. So we still have the C double bond O, that's the same. Okay, but instead of having the hydroxyl sticking off, right, we just have a hydrogen. Okay, so hence why it's the carbonyl instead of the carboxyl. Okay, gross. And these are terribly similar both in shape and in name. All right. Best thing you can do for yourself, unfortunately, is practice with this. Okay, now, as far as our lipids go, this is one of the only places we're getting our oxygen from. So that can be one of the things that can help us remember. But otherwise, unfortunately, this is just a lot of practice. Okay. And it's gross. This is one of those places where the naming conventions just is not in our favor here. Okay. So I recommend, and you're going to see me do this a lot, every time we get a new one, we're just going to keep building this table at the top, which is going to help us do our very best to keep it organized, which is also why we're building our little in-class activity study guide, because it is a bit of a pain. Okay. This is also why it's one of our focuses, because it is kind of a pain. All right, so our carbs have carbonyls. Okay, lipids have carboxyl groups. Okay, and these long deserts of these hydrocarbon chains. 
Mm. Okay, any questions so far on lipids or lipids versus carbs and what kinds of things that we can look for? Yes, ma'am. So as like a structural component, right? And so we'll look at a few examples, but literally can build shape in a body. So we can imagine like some versions of fat literally giving you shape. So kind of like how uh, with our carbs, we said like chitin or <coughs> cellulose builds shape and structure. Lipids do that as well. Any other questions? Okay, that's a big slide. So let's go ahead and stop here. I'm going to tackle that in three minutes, that's for sure. Yes, ma'am. And you said 5 p.m.? Yep. Okay, as we finish up, please also don't forget Ms. Lafferty's study session, which is tomorrow. And it's